everyone. I'm Alexa. And I'm Taylor. And we are Uncorked and Unfiltered. And we would like to remind you guys to please subscribe to our podcast wherever you are listening to us. And if that is Apple Podcasts, you can hit that subscribe button and also leave us a comment and a review. And you can also follow us on social media. Our Instagram is at uncorked underscore unfiltered. And our Twitter is at uncork podcast. Good job. Thank you. I like Taylor knows I almost get like <laughs> nervous saying that whole spiel because sometimes I overthink it. And like mm-hmm. when I drink, I just forget. Well, we are uncorked. We are uncorked. We missed you guys last week, but you know, the pandemic is slowly dying away. So like yeah. bear with us. I feel like a lot of podcasts also have like seasons and then take like three month breaks and we don't do that. Yeah. So if every once in a while we take a week off, sue us. I know. I know. Well, it was my sister's graduation from college last Monday, Tuesday, which is when we normally record. And I was down in Atlantic City. Don't worry, guys. I only lost $40, but I'm still bitter about it. And um, okay, quick sidebar. So my brother and I were at the bar in Atlantic City. Don't worry. We were wearing masks, except when we were drinking. And we were like talking to this couple who was like across the bar. Don't worry. Six feet. And um the one girl was telling us about her friend who was out in Vegas and he was gambling and he was up $40,000. He started with five, got up all that much. The girl was like, I texted him. I said, get out right now, get on a plane, go to Miami and live your life. Or like, just walk away, (laughs) walk away. He texted her and was like, I'm going to keep going. He ended up owing the casino $8,000, people. This is why I don't understand gambling. Like, if you had to put uh-uh. it into a story, that would be the story of why I don't understand it. Because p- clearly the people that, like, get and win money then don't know when to pull out. Are you kidding me? Forty grand, $40,000. That's a down payment on a house. And then some. That's insane. Mm-hmm. I couldn't believe it. I was so... I was angry about my 40 bucks that I lost. Then I heard that. Okay. Well, I'm really not doing that bad. If I only lost 40, $40, I could have lost 40,000. So I guess I'm doing well. I know. Like, I'm glad I don't have that type of like addiction or like that, that like bug inside of me. That's like, like doing that. Cause that's just like, no, 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 thanks. Even losing that 40 bucks. I was like, that was like a few hours of work that I just lost in a minute. So that was fun. Mm. Okay. Well, I'm so sorry for your loss. Um, Thank you. Just adding on to story time. I have a story and I didn't even tell you this. Oh boy. So yesterday my roommate, Eric and I went to the movies and we love going to the movies. So we're excited that they've opened up in the city again. Mm -hmm. And um, I don't really know why. I don't know how this happened. I think I was um, bamboozled, but we saw Saw. Okay the new Saw movie and we went to the theater and it was like me him and like four other people and it was like a huge ass theater it was like an IMAX theater so Mm -hmm. like felt super comfortable fine until this man walks in with a very large backpack and Eric and I specifically put sat in the last row because you know we live in New York people are crazy people do things so we were like let's sit in the last row so like we can visually see everything Mm -hmm. And so we sit in the last row, but then there's a row behind us. that's technically for the, for handicapped. This man comes in with a big bag, like young and sits in one of the handicapped seats. And I'm like, fuck, great. Okay. So the entire movie, not only am I having a panic attack because of the film I'm watching with these disgusting scenes that is being shown in IMAX, right? I'm dealing with the man behind me that I'm nervous that he's about to kill me. All of a sudden, what do I smell? Cigarette smoke. I'm looking around. I see that this man is literally smoking a real cigarette in the middle of a film. And so I turned to Eric and I'm like, Eric, he's smoking a cigarette, a.k.a. he's smoking the last cigarette that he will ever smoke in his life, a.k.a. (laughs) he's about to shoot us and then himself. This is obviously what's happening. So then I'm freaking him out. And the whole time for like the last 45 minutes, like I'm just like the whole time, like kind of looking behind me and like not focused and I'm here. I survived, Mm -hmm. but I'm like, 
I don't really know if I can do movie theaters anymore because maybe also because it was a horror movie. It like it was heightened. Right. Yeah. I just like don't trust. I don't know. Like freaks me out. Also, who smokes a cigarette in a movie theater? Obviously, you're not of sound mind and or you're on drugs. I will do you one further. Who smokes a cigarette? Period. It's 2021 people. They cause cancer. Stop. Exactly. So he may have not killed me today, but I have secondhand smoke. So in 20 years, I will be dead. Okay. You're only 26. I hope it's a lot more than 20 years. I know, but I still feel like he contributed to my death. So I'm annoyed. (laughs) Do you remember? So Lex and I were at the bar one time and this guy, we were, the bar had closed. We were outside on the curb trying to get a cab, obviously. And this like group of guys walked over to us and this sounds really bad, but like, it really wasn't that scary. I don't know if we were just intoxicated and it was fine or what the situation Mm was, but all of a sudden this one guy starts smoking a cigarette and he's like breathing it at Alexa. And that was enough for her. She goes full on attack mode, starts screaming at these guys to back up. And the one kid with the cigarette, she goes and get your fucking cancer stick out of my face. Needless to say, they walked away. They did walk away. They didn't know who they were messing with. They had I, no idea. Yeah. I remember saying that. I don't necessarily remember why it triggered me and I got like so heated, but alcohol does that to you. But um, right. he was smoking it right in my face and they uh-huh. were annoying. So they were so annoying. So no regrets. I thought it was just funny. Yeah. Because yeah. who calls it a cancer sick? Only <laughs> <him>. <laughs> Only me. I know. Like, I was like, good for you. Like, your little drunk self being so, like, witty, you know? Like, good for right. you, girl. Right. I love when I have those good drunk moments. Me too. Me too. Uh, anyway, so we super sidetracked. But there you go, guys. Um, that's our life. But we actually were super excited because Taylor was obviously really busy with her sissy being a graduate. But also, mm-hmm. we were like, there's no news. So there's no point like it's not even a loss not doing the podcast because there was nothing going on last week thankfully this week we have a decent amount of hot takes and like a lot of them are juicy so like Mm -hmm. i'm excited to go through them yeah i'll start us off i think one of the biggest things that hit the news today was that ariana grande and dalton gomez got married yeah thank you that's what i was waiting for (laughs) um they had a private ceremony at her house in montecito Montecito is that how you pronounce it I think so okay there was about 20 people there so it was super small super intimate um the wedding happened only five months after the proposal and from what I've kind of heard and read it sounds like they weren't really planning on a big wedding or anything like that um according to Dumois our favorite Instagram account we love people had yeah people had been writing into her And said that they went out of their way to cover up the ability for anybody to see or hear from them. Um, It was like Fort Knox, I guess, apparently. Um, It was just very quiet, very personal. personal. They said there was no other celebrities there, but the street was packed. Um, They brought in temporary trees and foliage to make it impossible to see the property. They also played amplified bird sounds. This is all alleged, according to people that had heard it and wrote into Dumois um, to protect um, sound and stuff like that. So it just sounds like they really like didn't want anybody even knowing this was happening, which I personally think is great. I think for like celebrities that are that high profile because Ariana Grande is very high profile for her to be able to have this private moment with her and her now husband and just their family and their maybe closest friends. It's like probably one of the hardest things to ever achieve. So the fact that they did it and they did it the way they wanted to do it, I'm, I'm here for it and I'm proud of them. Yeah, I agree with you. I'm like, makes sense. I mean, I feel like if I was in her shoes and I was constantly in the limelight, can't even go to mm-hmm. Starbucks without having a million paparazzi pics. Also, like, I feel like us normals, a right. wedding is exciting for us because you get to dress up. You get to kind of be like the center of the tension. Like it's your day. Like she's right. had a million days. She doesn't need right. another. And so when you kind of strip away all of that stuff, cause like all of us, yeah, you get to like, it's like your day. And then like, you're focused on like, 
having that moment with your like husband to be for her right you strip away all that fancy shit and it's like i just want to have this day with him and be with like my close friends and family it makes sense and i feel like celebrities are doing it more and more it's like becoming yeah. more you know like acceptable where it's like you guys deserve to have this like private moment and like a lot of people i think are being extra about like the lengths that they took bringing up like the extra trees and the bird noises i'm like i don't care no. Is she obviously was anxious and didn't want anyone to be able to know what was going on in her private event. It is, we are able to all have private events and have no one who we don't want a part of it to be a part of it. She isn't. Right. So I'm like, do whatever the freak you want. Have a freaking hunger games globe around you. I don't care. I would pay to see that, but I'd also don't care. Like do it, you yeah. know, like, no, I fully agree. And I think it also too shows so much more like the big celebrity weddings where it's like, there's, thousands of people there and the paparazzi and the this and then that it's like they're divorced in six months if that mm -hmm. the ones that are usually more private more personal it's like they're the marriages that are gonna last so I mean mazel to them like I hope you know it all pans out well for them and I I feel good about them I don't, I don't know why I know nothing yeah. about this guy but I feel good about it me too. And I feel like a lot of the haters are like, she needs to calm down. She was just engaged with Pete and now she's engaged with him and now she's married. I'm like, maybe the reason why she got engaged with him so fast and is now married to him is because she truly found like, this guy's great for me. So I don't need right. to wait. Obviously it could not be that either, but that also is a very good possibility. <laughs> like everyone just assumes because she went to the next guy fast and got serious. It's like, she's rusting. Well, maybe she just found found the person and she's like okay I'm good this is what I was looking right. for thank you right so, and yeah. it probably yeah it probably honestly helped that she went from Pete to this next guy because she probably was like this is everything I don't want like now I have such a clear picture of what I want that like she didn't this next guy obviously that she ended up marrying was everything she wanted and she knew what she wanted and it wasn't so much a well like do I like this about him do I like that about him it was like no 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 like this is what I want this is I know I want this and I like this about him and it's gonna work and we're getting married and boom they did it and that's it yeah no I'm happy for her I'm happy for him um yeah I would really love to see them like last have babies and we'll see what happens yeah me too well, we're going from like really cute news to really sucky news. Um, I call this hot take John Milani, John Milani, John Milan. Oh my God, John <laughs> Milani sucks ass because yeah. he does. Yeah. Um. So it was announced. I feel like on Doom and stuff, we were definitely seeing rumors of like. <laughs> it's really funny because they were calling it like a B list comedian was getting divorced and everyone was like guessing who it was well it turns out it was right. john mulaney and he did announce that he was getting uh divorced from his spouse anna tendler they were married for six years dated a while before that um there was some like hints of them getting divorced i believe a few like a month or two or three prior to the announcement she changed her name on instagram and also deleted all pictures of him. So definitely there was like Rocky mm -hmm. before the announcement. But I mean, checks out. You don't just get divorced in a day. <laughs> like there is a decline. Right. Right. Yeah. Um. So then that was announced. Really sad. The awkward thing about that statement is that I noticed was that they said Anna is devastated by the news that John was divorcing her. So it was very clear that he did it. And what was interesting about right. this is he was just in rehab for like three months for alcohol and drug abuse. He was sober previously for like over a decade. And like, I used to be a big fan. Of, I, I'm a big fan of him. Like I've seen him, his stand up live. Like I've seen all this Netflix stuff and he actively talked about his sobriety um, and everything. So he obviously relapsed was in rehab and it was very interesting that when he came out of rehab was when they got divorced. So that yeah. was the first bit of news. The second bit of news is literally five minutes later, news broke out that Olivia Munn, who's an actress, mm -hmm. and John Mulaney are dating. And it was kind of like, huh? Because like, <laughs> it just came out that he was getting a divorce. Well, all the internet people did their work and there's a, it's getting a little messy. There's kind of a little bit of a history with Olivia and John. Olivia and John apparently met at a wedding with mutual friends. And there's this like really crazy article where she was like 
talking about meeting him and his fiance. She was just his fiance mm-hmm. at the time and saying how she was obsessed with him. And like, she was such a fan. And like, she was like, I was so creepy. I kept like walking up to him in the wedding and trying to like talk to them. And then she also mentioned that the next day she sent him an email and he never responded. And she was like, I guess he never got it. And like, it seemed innocent back when this was made in like 2014, this article. But then looking back, you're like, oh my God. So now everyone's yeah. kind of trying to piece it together. And they're like, the timing seems a little sus. So mm-hmm. everyone's pointing towards they cheated or obviously maybe their marriage was apart for a while. I don't really know. It's definitely not looking good. I also saw something on Duma, our favorite, that in December, this girl was going for a walk and she knew that John Mulaney lived on that street and she remembered seeing a car. You saw this, right? She remembers seeing a car and she saw Olivia Munn sitting in the car and she was just like, oh my God, that's funny. And it wasn't until this news broke out that she put two and two together. So I don't know. Yeah, it seems a little sketch to me. And also, though, she seems like a psycho. Yeah. She does seem a little, from what I've read, a little thirsty. Yeah. And just like, I mean, stop chasing him down at a wedding that he's there with his fiance. Like, chill out. If I was that fiance, I would have been pissed. Pissed. I would have been so, I would have been so furious. But it just, I don't know, like, Something like that makes me feel like maybe there was some overlap. I wouldn't be super shocked, you know? Yeah, me too. It's just not a good look. But what everyone's – what I'm most interested about – okay, this shit happens all the time. People cheat. It sucks. What I'm interested about is, like, why did this news leak about them dating or come out? That obviously had to come to someone around them. So why was this leaked? It, it's I wonder like, if she I, it. I know because apparently like she kind of thinks she's like higher up in like the hierarchy of like acting than she really is. So maybe she wanted to give herself a boost because her name's in the headlines more than it has been in five years. So I didn't know who she was. I had a Google her. Yeah. She's been in like random movies. She's nothing. Yeah. Calm down. Astonishing. Mm-hmm. So yeah. Ugh. Just like a yucky gross story. I'm just like, ew. Yeah. we don't like yeah. cheaters. We don't. And I really just hope the wife's okay. And that's it. So we'll obviously see if this story goes anywhere. If it gets any messier, we'll keep you posted. Yeah. On to like a happy story, though. Everyone's going to be excited about this. Benifer is back together. Allegedly, almost. Um, so I think everyone can kind of recall the infamous photos of jennifer lopez and ben affleck getting out of like some random white car together or something like that after her and a ride broke up and everybody was like huh right and yeah it definitely sparked like interest conversation people were like is this like a thing now what's kind of going on and i guess this last weekend they went on a trip or maybe like this last week or something like that they went on a trip to montana where things seem to be heating up a little bit According to, like, whoever, you know, some source, um, they're taking it slow and being friendly, but things will probably move to be a more romantic thing soon. Everything really heated up when she posted on Instagram that she was, like, re-releasing her album, This Is Me, that came out originally in 2002, and it was dedicated to Ben. So people are like, okay, she's, like, confirming now that she is officially dating him, or at least is, like, very interested in, like, restarting something with him. Complete sidebar to A-Rod. He is very pissed that they are hanging out, and according to Dumois, people are saying that, like, he's going to start leaking shit to the press, and he did leak a picture of, like, I think it was his daughter's birthday or something, and it was, like, him and his two daughters sitting and there was like three other seats open which was supposed to be for like j-lo and like her two kids and it was like the shade of the post was insane like it was clearly meant for like that kind of thing i know but i'm also like dude you fucking cheated first so shut the fuck up thank you very much i don't care at all you should be pissed i hope you cry i hope you cry every night every night fuck with j-lo okay this is what happened Yeah, I don't care. I don't like, care. did I like slightly respect the pettiness of that post? Maybe a little. 
but it had nothing to do with it nothing to do with him i was just like oh the no. shade um yeah yeah i don't give a fuck about him okay me like and I never really knew about the whole Benefer thing because we were, like, so young. Like, obviously, I knew they were yeah. married or, or engaged. I thought they were married. And then when I did research, they were only engaged. And right. finding out the whole thing of why they originally broke up was, like, they were engaged. And then, like, a few days before their wedding, they canceled it. And mm-hmm. they blamed it on there was too much, like, publicity and buzz going around the wedding. And they didn't want that. So that's why they canceled it. But then – it turns out that when they kept trying to reschedule it, Ben kept being like, no, I don't want to. No, I don't want to. And like eventually, I guess it came out that he really was getting cold feet. So then mm-hmm. she just eventually walked away and then they broke up. Which basically what I get the vibe is like he just wasn't ready at the time. He wasn't ready to commit. Right. And yeah, so like I am not anti this at all. I'm like they had no. a past. They had a connection. Mm-hmm. Let's see where we'll it goes. See. I mean, I feel good about it. I I read somewhere that she had said like when the marriage and everything was called off, like that was the first like really bad heartbreak of her life. So I'm kind of like, oh, like just tread lightly, but also like it could be time. It could right. be you guys' time, you know, like enough stuff has gone on in both of your lives. You've grown like maybe you guys will now realize that this is how it's meant to be. So, yeah, I mean, he's been married once. Right. After this, has had other serious relationships. She's been married once, but then also basically married to A Rod. Like they've gone through a lot separately. So they're probably not even the same people at this point, but right. like still have that love for each other. So we'll see where it goes. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, fingers crossed. Yeah. Yeah. I'm into it. I'm into it. Yeah. All right. All right. So moving on to some other news. So this morning it was announced. Um, well, AT and T confirmed that it will spin off its Warner Media dis- division, which is home to like a lot of like Hollywood TV and film assets, but most importantly, the streaming service HBO Max, recently known as HBO, and it will merge with Discovery, which is the cable network giant that specializes in nonfiction programming and reality shows. Um, Some things that's under them is obviously Discovery, TLC, HGTV, all that jazz. Um, It seems like this deal was jolted, creating what both companies hope will become another global entertainment titan to challenge Disney and Netflix, which are the two big boys. Um, So basically, this is a big deal, and I know... I may be talking like in another language to some to some people, but like what I feel like a lot of people don't realize is like what is happening in the media industry is that we're going to just get down to like literally three companies owning everything. I'm like all of these merges are starting to happen. And this is all because Netflix is it's just unbeatable. And like you can't everyone else, especially cable TV, just cannot compete with them. Like, they just can't. Like, there's no competition, like, even remotely. And even the other streaming networks, clearly, like HBO Max, they can't even compete with them. So all of these merges keep happening to hope that they can create, like, a bigger streaming network that is, like, a viable competition. So it leaves, like, a world of possibilities for both the streaming properties because there's a Discovery Plus now. Um, So everyone obviously is thinking it's going to combine them in sort of like an HBO Discovery Max Plus service. So, Or they're wondering if they're going to keep them like separate with some sort of a bundle. But it's just like all very interesting. And just to give you guys more of like a look into like how big Netflix is. So Discovery Plus is 15 million subscribers. HBO Max has 44 million subscribers. Disney Plus has 103 million and Netflix has 207 million subscribers. Oh my God. That's crazy. Yeah. I mean, it's just, they're unbeatable, but it's because they were the OG of the streaming network Mm -hmm. and people went with them from the, from the get go. And like, you don't usually cancel your subscription unless like you're really like, I'm done. And like Netflix has only been like pushing out good content. So like, They're only going to keep getting more. Yeah. I think honestly, like it might be Netflix, but like some companies just going to turn around and be like, we're going to combine everything and like stream it all from us. And then it's like, okay, so we're basically paying for cable. Oh my God. Yeah. 
Yeah. It's Thanks definitely going to keep going where yeah. I, I was literally talking about this with Eric this morning where I think it's going to be any cable show is eventually yeah. just going to be under one competing with like the streaming services. It's true. And like, it's going to be to the point where cable is just like not even a thing anymore and you're just paying for streaming services and that's it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's just the world has changed. Like originally when you went on HT, HGTV, that's only where you could find those types of shows. Yeah. You know, the home improvement, the, all that type, the design, like all of that. Mm-hmm. You can find those shows on Netflix. You can find those shows on Hulu. It, it, it's not, it's, the world has changed where it's like these channels that were supposed to be made because they were niches. They're not that anymore. You can find that anywhere. So they're hurting. It's kind of crazy. Like, I don't know. I feel like we've given up so much of our power to the big companies, but yeah, it's called like the big six or something, but I think it eventually go down to the big three, (laughs) the big one. So this was announced, I think, like last week, but Thomas Rhett and his wife, Lauren, are pregnant again. Aww. Um, they I know it's so, so cute. So they already have two biological daughters and then one adopted daughter. Um, and they made their announcement on Instagram. And I just think Thomas Rhett's caption was like the funniest. Lauren basically just said like, oh, my God, like we're now like a family of six or like four daughters coming at you or some shit. But Thomas Rhett said in his caption, well, dot, 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 we are pregnant again tonight when I was on stage in Fort Worth about to play to all the guys that date my girls. My wife talked to me in my ear monitor and said, you can tell them if you want. So anyways, now you know. We are pumped to be having our fourth girl. Feel free to buy all the merch you want, knowing that all the proceeds are going to are going straight to all the weddings I'll be paying for one day. Love you so much, Lauren. We always wanted a big Thanksgiving table. And I just like I'm getting chills even just like reading it. I'm like so happy for them. I love them. I love their love story. I love all their daughters. I think all their daughters are so beautiful and like so sweet and just it's amazing and I'm happy. I'm so happy. That caption is the cutest thing ever. It literally, it wasn't something like, oh my God, like we're having another. This is so great. I love everybody. It was so real. It was like, well, now you know. Here we go. Yeah. Another one. Please buy all of my merchandise because I need the money. Like it just made him seem so real. They're and a family. So just They're like, tr- yeah. Yeah. They're like, oh, fuck. Now we have four weddings to pay for. Like, please help us out. I I don't know. I loved it. I think they're such great parents from what you see on Instagram, which obviously is only, you know, a portion of what actually happens. But they all seem so great. And like, I don't know. I just love their little family. I want them to adopt me. I want them to adopt you, too. Thank you. Um, Yeah, they're super cute. And it's so funny that they have four girls. Yes, so good luck. <laughs> I'm sure like deep down he's like, I want a boy, but he's like, whatever, I love my girls, bring it. Yeah, I think so too, but he's such a girl dad. Like you could just tell. He's used to it now. Yeah. Having three, it's like, all right, let's go. What's a freaking another? Yeah. yeah. And his song to all the guys that date my girls is one of the cutest songs I've ever heard in my life. Like definitely listen to it if you have like have to li- Yeah. I'll have yeah. to listen to it too. I don't think I know that one. Good for them. Super cute. Commercial break. If you're looking for CBD products, look no further than Zelm Labs. They have CBD oils, CBD muscle cream, CBD skincare products, and much more. CBD helps calm anxiety, stress, and helps aid with sleeplessness. Zelm Labs is a premium CBD with a double certification with COA and GMP certified. Zelm Labs has a wide array of products from soft gels to gummies and even CBD for your dogs. Use our code UNCORKED, U-N-C-O-R-K-E-D, for 20% off of your products. If you go to zelmlabs.com, Z-E-L-M labs.com. Okay, we're really going all over the map. So like, bear with us guys, because now we're going to go back. (laughs) I'm going to go into some like, a little bit of heavy shit regarding Bill Gates and it's upsetting because we announced previously on our podcast that like him and Melinda were getting a divorce and like a lot of stuff has come out since then. 
Yeah. Okay. Trigger warning. <laughs> Trigger warning. So essentially, um, news broke out that Jeffrey Epstein gave Bill Gates advice on how to end his toxic marriage to Melinda during dozens of men's club meetings at pedophile at a pedophile's New York City home. So news broke out that apparently Gates and Epstein were like buds. And yeah, so Gates would occasionally or a lot visit Epstein's lair as they would call it, which is when like a lot of like disgusting stuff went down in this like upper East side, like huge ass apartment, which is where I live. So I'm like, I got to find it. Um, Mm -hmm. And he said that that place was like an escape from his unhappy marriage and that the pair were very close. Um, But the report alleges that the pair's friendship blurred personal and professional lines and was much closer than Gates had like ever previously admitted. And as I was reading different articles, it came out that Gates got close with Epstein after Epstein was charged with prostitution with a minor. And Melinda, his wife, was very anti this marriage, this marriage, this re- like friendship. And a- what sources are saying was a cause for a lot of the strain in their marriage because she was like, why are you hanging out with him? Why are you talking to him? Like, he's a criminal, like, whatever, whatever. And clearly Gates went, Bill Gates went more towards Epstein than, like, listening to his wife. And you should always listen to your life, you f- wife, you fucking idiot. Um, yep. But the news comes as another blow um, to Gates, who was revealed to have had an affair 20 years ago and what is accused of making advances on employees at both Microsoft and the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. This honestly disgusts me because I always saw the Bill and Gates Foundation as like such an amazing, wholesome thing. And now knowing. Yeah. Ugh, all right, I'll continue. So the affair yes. came to light after the Microsoft employee wrote to the board in 2019 with details and allegedly asked that Gates exchanged wife read the letter. The Microsoft, the Microsoft board decided that Gates, who left Microsoft unexpectedly last year, should step down after the relationship in 2000 was deemed to be inappropriate. And this is mind-blowing because this is the reason why he stepped down and it wasn't public. Everyone thought he stepped down just to focus on other shit. And this was really why he stepped down. Um, so the Gates spoke, spokeswoman confirmed that he had a sexual relationship with a female staff member in 2000 and that he resigned as an investigation into the relationship was being conducted by an external law firm on behalf of the company board. The New York Times also reported that Gates asked a Microsoft employee in 2006 after watching her make a presentation and a couple of years later asked out an employee with the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation both while he was married. Bill Gates reportedly told the Microsoft employee in an email, if this makes you uncomfortable, pretend it never happened. She said she took his advice. Gates later allegedly asked an employee with the Bill and Gates, um, Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation to dinner while the pair were in New York for a trip. Ew. Uh, so he's like a slimeball cheater, too. You can't, get, you can't get any more slimeball than someone connected with Jeffrey Epstein. That's it. You're done. You're done. Also, like, he's a nerd. Everyone's like, the nerds are the good ones. Like, go for the nerds. Not ones with money. Not Not ones with money. It changes you. It changes you. Yeah. Money changes you. That's what it is. Yeah. Like, so disgusting. Disgusting. I'm T. Melinda. I mean, same. And I'm, like, so thankful that they didn't have a prenup because you better get everything, honey. Fuck that guy. Take him for everything that he is worth. Screw everything. Him. And also, like, can we investigate him? Because if you were very close with Jeffrey Epstein, I want to learn more about that. Right. Right. It's just crazy. Like, he had such this good boy, like, yeah, persona. And, like, everyone thought he was, like, this great guy. I'm pretty sure he donated a bunch of money to, like, the COVID vaccine. Like, yeah. You know what I mean? Like, they just, he seemed like such a good guy. And it's like, he's not. Like, it's crazy. It is crazy. And I'm just happy this all came out. Because he shouldn't have let it, like, I love the Me Too movement. And, like, it's not fair that, like, he was able to just resign and not have this information come out and, like, get away with it. So I'm glad that this is now coming out. Yeah. And I bet Melinda leaked it. And I love her. (laughs) I hope she did because I'm like, yes, queen. 
leak that shit. Like he does not deserve anyone's sympathy. It's just sad. It, like this affair was 20 years ago, which really means that their marriage, most of their marriage was never anything. That's, yeah. Ugh. Ugh. It's gross. It's so I gross. Hate it. All right, yeah. let's move on before I throw up. My turn. <laughs> my, my, my turn. My turn. Um, so apparently the royal family is starting to get sick of Harry and all of his bullshit. <laughs> he <laughs> most recently was on Dak Shepard's podcast and he was trash talking his dad, saying he has caused him a lot of pain and suffering. And royal aides are kind of saying that, like, he should be stripped of his title because he's not really acting like a royal anymore. And it's kind of just airing the dirty laundry of the entire royal family. Apparently, according to Dumas, someone posted this. Um, Harry truly didn't mean to hurt Charles with what he said on the podcast, but the damage is done regardless. There's fears that this will mean Charles will stop protecting Harry about the previous scandals. What happens in Vegas doesn't always stay in Vegas, and sometimes it requires financial support. And to me, I'm like, so did Harry have a child? No, like, for real financial support, did he have a child? Something to think about. Something to think about, for sure. Also, massive plot twist in Harry's life. Also, massive plot twist in, like, the good boy. He's coming clean for his family persona. Because, like... That's not that's not the look that I don't think he was intending. Like, if you're not acknowledging the child, that's just, like, not great. You know? That's not, that's like, not good. Paying it off. It's not, it's not great. So, oh, my God. that's This could get really say, messy. It could. And my thing is... Look at I love Harry and I love Megan, but they opened a can of worms. And it's kind of one of those things where it's like you don't want to open the can if there's a lot more worms than there are you. That's all I'm saying. Right. No, I know what you're saying. It's like don't walk into something if you're not completely clean yourself. Right. Exactly. And it's gonna clearly- bite you in the butt. Yeah, and you're fucking with the royal family. Like, they got people. They're they, not they going to, like, give They're up not or ma- lose easy. Yeah. Yeah. So, we'll see. I think it's only going to get messier, though, as time goes by, to be honest. I agree. So, I don't think this is the last we're going to hear about the whole situation. All right. Well, on to our next next and last hot take. Um, I'm sure everyone's heard this news, but... Ellen DeGeneres has announced that the Ellen DeGeneres show is going to be ending after its 19th season, which will be next year. It's last season. And I don't think this news came as a shock to anyone considering how she was like canceled recently. And she did kind of recoup from it. You know, her season went on and stuff, but it wasn't the same. I feel like no one's really gotten over it. And after her whole toxic work environment was kind of blown up in her face. I just don't think she could recover. Although Mm -hmm. she's not blaming it on that. And she's just saying, you know, she's ready for something different. And, you know, the show just has run its course and all that jazz, but everyone really knows what the situation is. Yeah. Yeah. I I appreciate the playoff Ellen, but I'm calling bullshit. Like, you didn't yeah. get you didn't get like a warm and fuzzy a few months ago. You know, people were literally saying it's toxic. We hate working for you. You're mean. Your staff is mean. Blah 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 blah. Like you're yeah. not. You can't recover from that. Not in this day and age. You know what I mean? No. And like so. her whole persona has changed. There was an interview with Savannah. Going blank of her last name, but she's like a news reporter journalist, and she was on the Ellen Show the day it was announced that it was ending. It was really awkward because Savannah was like, oh, 19th season is ending. Like, that sucks. It's not the 20th. And Ellen was like, no, I'm glad it's the 19th. 19 is a good number. Savannah's like, really? Why do you think that? And Ellen's like, it's a good number. I would rather it be 19 than 20. And it was just like a very awkward banter going back and forth. Look it up. I suggest you to do. And there was just like weird vibes. And watching that was like, Ellen's pissed. And she isn't happy this is ending. Yeah. Even the interview with Dakota – uh what is her name oh uh fuck the girl from 50 shades of gray yeah it's not dakota fanning right no johnson dakota something dakota johnson that's it okay that interview has been surfacing a lot lately where she literally was like no like where ellen was like oh you didn't invite me to your birthday party and she was like no ellen i did invite you and like you said no she was like i texted you yeah and it's just like 
I don't know. I don't know what to believe. Obviously, I want to believe the persona that she's put out into the universe for so long where, like, she's this great person and blah, 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 blah. But, like. Yeah. I mean, we talked about this a long time ago when the cancel came out. I still think she's a kind person. I still think she, like, the stuff she does, she did it genuinely. But I just think she's a little bit of a bitch at work. And she got away with it, which almost made her act worse, where she wasn't reality checked. And I just think that's what happened. I don't think she's an evil person. I wouldn't put her remotely high on the totem pole of people that should be like exiled but i do think she deserved being called out for it because obviously she took it too far that's it i agree there's definitely worse people that could be canceled so yeah you know so yeah we'll see what she'll be up to next i like honestly feel like she'll come out with like some other show somewhere Mm -hmm. it'll probably be the same type of thing just like a little different yeah yeah totally so yeah yeah that's that for our hot takes um before we guys let you go we do have i believe taylor you said one bumble bio for us to rate i do technically this is a hinge bio like question prompt answering but like quick quick sidebar so lex and i we are by no stretch dating gurus but like we want to try to like I don't know if any of our listeners have questions or like anything like that, like kind of give our advice on it because we feel like we've dated a decent amount of scumbags where like we have good advice that we could probably give. So send us a DM on Instagram or Twitter or whatever. Um, But the bio, well, the hinge prompt that I'm reading for you all tonight, I'll introduce you to my family if... You're not annoying. What? That's it? That's what what it says. If you're not annoying. Are you serious? I swear. Like, really? What? Like, really? So we're just, we're listing the obvious nowadays. We're just kind of, obviously, if I found someone annoying, I wouldn't ever introduce them to my family. Right. I feel like that's one of those things that like you don't really need to write. You could say, I'll introduce you to my family if you love playing Scrabble, if you love Polish food, if you love there's a million other things you could write. If you're not annoying. You're annoying okay. and goodbye. You're annoying. you're annoying. You're probably never gonna introduce anyone you meet on these apps to your family. You just wanna hook up. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, but also I decline. Thank yes. you. Ew. I hate yeah. that. Yeah. No, all these ones I read to you, I give X's, but I just like think it's, I screenshot. No, them I know. Them. And thank you for doing that for us and screenshotting yeah. and sharing the audacity that these men have um, around uh, New Jersey. Like, truly audacity. It's like, Ew. okay, guys, you live in New Jersey. Calm down. Ew. I hate that so much. But yeah, as Taylor said, we, we kind of have enjoyed going over this little like section. So we kind of thought like we'd like to talk about different type of like dating topics and stuff since we talk about it so much off recording. So we're like, we may as well bring it to the mic because why the hell not? <laughs> um, so yeah, more to come. But until then, you could uh, subscribe to our podcast wherever you are listening to us. Um, you could also on Apple podcast, leave us a review or a comment. And while you're at it, follow us on social media. Our Instagram is at uncorked underscore unfiltered. And our Twitter is at uncorked podcast. And remember, stay hydrated and drink lots of wine. Bye guys. Have a good week. (laughs) 